Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, so today we're gonna do another lecture and let me share my screen. It's gonna be on Bollywood. Let's see if I can share my screen there. Let me get myself out, okay. Welcome. So we have gone over Kauai, which is um, Korean popular culture. We have gone over, uh, oh, sorry, we've gone over Hallyu which is Korean popular culture. We've gone over Kauai, which is uh, Japanese popular culture. But did you know, and we also have gone over Hong Kong um, films, right? But we have we gone over Bollywood, which is Indian, a uh, huge, massive movie industry. Okay, so Bollywoodization. All right, so this article, okay. So we have lots of South Indian stars, American stars that you can look at. Um, unfortunately, I can't sh I show a video, but I would love for you to go on and look at an Aziz Ansari uh, kind of clip. And he talks about marriage and saying very funny. Harry Kondabolobo, uh, Henry, Harry Kondabuli, um, super funny. Uh, and then of course the original Russell Peters, Canadian Indian, wonderful guy. All right, so this chapter is called The Bollywoodization of Indian Cinema by A. Rasha Ashka. Uh, so Hollywood, the argument is, is not the only medium. For millions of fans, Bollywood or Indian uh, film industry is the number one industry. For example, my mother in Vietnam actually grew up watching Bollywood films, okay? She watched them dubbed. Okay, if it means, okay? So she, Bollywood is based in Mumbai, Mumbai. India, but also is internationally known. Uh, Indian film industries are huge and popular. Fun fact, most original Bollywood stars were not Indian Indian, but were Jewish Indian. Isn't that super fun? That's a great uh, fact that you would know, okay? So there's so many popular films in India, um, uh, uh, you know, just so many. So uh, feel free to watch them. They're on Netflix if you're interested, um, but also you can find them on YouTube. Um, and also your, your local Indian juju uh, grocery store would have it. So actually for our class, we know this answer very easily. What are the other film industries? Well, if I asked you guys right now, you could pause it, and I know you would probably say, Hong Kong movies, right? You know, Shalom Soccer, et cetera. And then you would say something like, oh, uh, uh, Korean uh, K-pop movies or, uh, you know, uh, or K-dramas. And then you'd say, you know, uh, Mexican movie industry. Um, or you'd say, you know, Japanese or German, okay? So actually there's plenty of different movie industries. But actually what has been going on forever and from the beginning to now is the craze for Bollywood movies. Actually, there's always been a very popular, um, global popular Indian industry. Keep in mind that India is the second most popular country in the world, over one billion people. And, you know, they don't have a one child policy. So they will exceed China pretty soon as the most popular country in the world. Now, Bollywood film is successful all over the world in America in Asia, Southeast Asia, South Africa, uh, East Asia. So it's a very popular, where there are Indians, there are as popular Bollywood film industry. Um, the British uh, took over India for a long time and then they took a lot of uh, British uh, Indians out and they put them all over the world where they're colonizing. And so those Indian populations are still there and they are hungry for a global Bollywood film. Now these, take a look are two huge Bollywood stars, okay? You got Shah Rukh Khan. He's kind of like the Brad Pitt of Bollywood. Uh, very good looking. Um, my last, uh, in my other class, we talked about how uh, whiteness or uh, kind of like, uh, a colorism is an issue. You notice he's very light skinned. <laughs> and of course, she's considered the most beautiful woman on the planet, which is Aisha Ra. Um, take a look. Is she the most beautiful woman on the planet? I think she was also a Miss Universe. So she was a, a, a crown Miss Universe. So yeah, very beautiful stars. Um, you know, huge. huge. These people are like very, she's kind of like a, uh, kind of like Angela Jolie, um, Julia Roberts type. Okay, so very well respected. So what does, because as anthropologists, we have to break down, what does Bollywood offer uh, that so many people around the world is addicted to? And again, this is a class you take when you want to learn about like, you know, you want to learn about uh, stuff like that, right? So one, it has a high production value, right? 
a lot of singing and dancing that take a lot of uh, kind of rehearsal, right? That's not easy, okay? Large scale dancing, yes, it's amazing. These like dance routines, right? Always having a happy ending. So it's kind of feel good. It's feel good, okay? And then it's kind of like happy go lucky. So it's not like super, um, you know, it's not dark. It's not dark. Like you see like sometimes, sometimes like German films, uh, very dark and, you know, existentialist. Um, no, they're light and happy. Bollywood is a light and happy kind of genre. And again, no wild, similar to K-pop, K-dramas, there is no intercourse. It's kind of PG. So people all over the world can actually watch uh, Bollywood films and feel good about it. You can be grandma, you and your child together. Now, something else about Bollywood is the music. It's amazing, great music, very happy, wonderful music. There's lots of singing, okay? The costumes are just stunningly beautiful with the colors, the jewels. I mean, you know, think about all the other kind of uh, movie genres like Korean, Japanese, American. No one has that type of like just beautiful jewels on the screen, okay? The hair is elaborate, it's jeweled, it's actually fabulous, okay? And again, I really wanna push you to look more into original Bollywood stars, which were Jewish in origin, which is fun fact. Actually, there's lots of books how the Jews invented Hollywood in America. So you see, even transnationally, they are so popular and they started two movie industries, our own Hollywood, still lots of popular uh, Jewish actors and also in Bollywood. So again, wonderful, interesting, okay? And what I love about Bollywood that offers that uh, a lot of movies uh, uh, in around the world don't, they actually give a moral message, okay? Right is right. Uh, the good will succeed. If you're a good person, you will keep going. So again, these are things that um, other movie interests don't have. And again, if you want to feel good and actually just good for your soul, watch Bollywood films with your mom or with your dad or with your daughter or with your grandmother, okay? So there are three themes of Indian films, okay? Which is one, human values are important. Just being a human and being a good person, be, having good spirit is really important, okay? Number two theme, family values. You know, you are representative of your family. Um, you know, quote, good family you come from. If you are, you act good for people, that means, you know what, you're raised well, and that's important. All over Asia, um, you, you, are represent you are a representative of your family values, okay? That's something very different that you don't really see that in American films. Think of like Dora, 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 she like leaves her family and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, she's just like by herself. Okay, so again, a lot of, this is really goes against a lot of like Disney films because, you know, Disney films, they all go off by themselves. It's like, like you know, like, kind of like they're sui generis, like they have, their families have nothing to do with them. But, you know, this is really different, okay? And also the third thing, and this might be really like, it really like hits home if you're a diasporic Indian person or you're a diasporic person around the world, um, some, you're not in your original home, is that money is not everything, okay? It's not everything, okay? You could be a good person and have a good life, be moral, and then you're fine, okay? Test two question I will use. What are the reasons for the popularity of Bollywood films? Happy ending, uh, family values, and romance, okay? And again, I want to, to know, you note know that Bollywood is different from Indian cinema. Indian cinema is like actually Indian films for Indian people. Bollywood is actually films for Indian people, but also Indian diaspora, which is people, uh, Indian people of descent around the world, but also just Asian people around the world or other people, right? They're not no longer in uh, India. So Bollywood is 10 years old exists and caters to diasporas of Indian audiences. <clears throat> There's an export to Hong Kong, South Africa, of course, US. India cinema is <clears throat> over 50 years. Also feel good movies with happy endings. It caters to Indian audiences in India. So again, I, I want you to think of kind of the, the export of modernity. Audiences in Nigeria, Trinidad, and South Africa, they go to Indian fields because you know, Hollywood doesn't offer what these Indian films have, right? Think about it. These Indian films have nationalism. You're proud to be Indian. Identity, it kind of thinks of, okay, I'm fourth generation um, Indian in Hong Kong. Am I Indian still? You know, they ask these questions in these films, right? I just love it, okay? Also globalization, right? It's just, some of these films like span multiple countries, like right? Toronto, Hong Kong, uh, New York, LA, and it's the same film, okay? And there's like all these complex forms of identification. Yes, I can be uh, 
Indian that was born and raised in Toronto, but has family in Hong Kong and in, uh, in Africa, but also, you know, identify as Indian, okay? And so I want to push you to this book called Arjun Apadora and Modernity at Large. Um, talks about these like different scapes that you can have in one person. And these films have it. So it's just really amazing. So again, this is my last slide. Uh, please uh, email me if you have any questions and let me turn this off. Okay.